Mr. Speaker, let me take leave to express my condolences with the family of Whit Wayne Whitfield, owner of Choice, and senior police officer De Turville, the family of officer De, De Turville, as they mourn the loss of their loved ones. Mr. Speaker, I rise to give my full support to the bill to amend the Constitution of St. Lucia, Cap 1.101, to modify provisions that allow for appeals to Her Majesty in Council and to allow for appeals to the Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ. Mr. Speaker, I was wondering if I had anything to say here this afternoon. Having listened to the Grand Master, my learned friend, former Prime Minister Kennedy Anthony, and having listened to his junior, Bruce Lee, the mighty Karatika who landed that blow of ensuring that we create history today, Mr. Speaker. And I speak to our Bruce Lee of Honorable Prime Minister who has presented and taken on this challenge to bring this bill to the House. Yes, it's Bruce Lee and the Grand Master. <laughs> and when the opponents saw this alliance, they had no choice but to retrieve to safety. Mr. Speaker, I will make reference to the manifesto on page 28, which the Prime Minister quoted earlier. And what I want to reference in the manifesto is that the quotation said on page 28 under the heading Good Governance, Anti-Corruption and Constitutional Matters, point number four says, commence the process for the accession to the Caribbean Court of Justice as St. Lucia's final appellate court as the replacement to the Privy Council. The promise was to commence the process. And we are seeing that our mighty Prime Minister is not just commencing, but he is bringing it to fruition. And we will see that ascending into law. Mr. Speaker, I have listened to the Prime Minister, and there is one famous statement that resonates with me. And he always said, I have nothing to lose. I will do what I have to do for the people of St. Lucia. And what he is doing today in terms of looking at ascending to the CCJ is basically living up to his statements that he has nothing to lose. Whatever he has to do, he will do it. And it means if he has to change the Constitution, he will change the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, as one who advocates for human rights, having struggled with the trade unions over a decade, promote social justice, I see merit in this bill. Examenable dear Mr. Speaker, Bill Sala nuka passe ici en house la hodia. Ça c'est un bill qui a mené satisfaction by tout cet lycée. Parce que nous avons 4 ans depuis que nous sommes indépendants. Et que nous avons 18 ans depuis que Kailo Dias Sala a place en Kawaïbla. Et avec cet lycée pour que nous devions être même. Là, nous sommes là à commencer. 
So what I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, is that it is 44 years since we are independent. And we were there from the start of this CCJ. And it's only now we are actually making that deliberate effort under the leadership of the Prime Minister to be a member and to make it, not a member, but to make it our final court of appeal. Mr. Speaker, I know the talk out there. I know the talk on social media because we have to be aware of what's happening in our surroundings. And there are some who chose to march against the amendment to this bill. But Mr. Speaker, I will tell you they came one day too early because March starts tomorrow. <laughs> so they cannot march today. They cannot march yesterday. They had to wait for tomorrow. So instead of staying in this house and represent the people, the leader of the opposition decided to go out there and spin the debate on a radio station. Our people deserve better than that. And we expected the leader of the opposition to be man enough to sit here and represent the people of St. Lucia. And this is what I'm doing and what my colleagues here are doing, that we are representing the people, thick and thin, whatever it takes. And Mr. Speaker, I was very disappointed with a statement made by the leader of the opposition about his lack of confidence in you as speaker. I hope he does not come back here because you will still be there as the speaker. Mr. Speaker, although many of us believe that the Constitution of St. Lucia Amendment Bill was long in coming, we are nonetheless happy that it is held today. In your shaitan, you can spare your bills on the passé. Avec bon Dieu, faire hodi à ces joies, pote nous qui discuter bills là en house là, avec bills là qui passé pour loi pour cette ici. Mr. Speaker, there are many reasons why we have to pass this bill, and these include one we are actually seeing this as our as part of the regional effort to build the capacity of the people in St. Lucia and the Caribbean many times we express doubts about our own capabilities and people outside of our jurisdiction celebrate us but we do not celebrate ourselves. When we clap, we normally clap for others, but we do not clap for ourselves. I think today is the day for us to clap for St. Lucia, clap for this government, and clap for the future that we are going to create for the next generation. Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia will be proud to join its fellow countries in the region to make the CCJ its final appellate court. We'll be joining Barbados, we'll be joining Belize and Dominica. We are going to say bye-bye to the Privy Council after 44 years of independence. Mr. Speaker, 44. And if we put the 44 in our Creole language, four means strong. Four means strong. That means we are strong and stronger. We have West Indies cricket. We have the University of the West Indies. We have the CCJ. We have Nobel Prize winners. We have Lavin Spencer. We have Julian Alfred. We have Darren Sami. They said Sean Edwards. 
We had Honorable Ernest Hille and Sir Julian R. Hunt who headed the, 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 the cricket, West Indies cricket um, board at the same time and Sammy was captain of the West Indies. That was a trio and that was a top of the, uh, in the region. We have the right honorable Kenny D. Anthony, constitutional lawyer. And today, he had a field day in the house. And we have the little boy that came from Masha, who is our prime minister today. Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia is the home for many regional bodies, like the OECS headquarters. We have Ectel, we have Carilec, we have Kawasa, we have the Caribbean Union of Teachers. And for your information, Mr. Speaker, we had the Regional Office for Education International, of which your humble servant was the one that introduced this office in this country. And when we speak of Education International, we are talking about an organization that represents 34 million members worldwide. And your humble servant was the regional coordinator in the North America Caribbean region, and the regional headquarters was located right here in St. Lucia. So, Samakadia, Mr. Speaker, Lanya Bagaya St. Lisi, Munkota, St. Lisi is a fair exact by Lestakawaibla. Avec pour aller à CCJ, à nous attraper ça tellement web. Et mon gars dit ok, match. Je parle de CCJ. Nous voulons mon copain that the CCJ that we are talking about is for the ordinary man to get access to justice in this country. The CCJ that we are talking about, ça nous va parler à sous CCJ, c'est pour faire n'importe moun, n'importe malewe qui veut justice, yo sa jwenn ni la. Mais avant ça, yo teni pour aller l'Angleterre, paye combien 100000 dollars, yo pa ka jamais jwenn justice. F, yo pa ka jwenn droit yo parce yo pa ni l'argent. Avec justice, c'est pas à sous l'argent. C'est aide ou ou droit et bon pardon. Et ce n'est pas sous ni l'argent pour qu'on ait une justice. Et beaucoup de gens ont souffert des injustices parce qu'ils ne peuvent pas l'afforder. Et ce n'est pas ce que ce gouvernement est promouvoir. Ce gouvernement est promouvoir les droits de tous. Que ce soit un riche, que ce soit un pauvre, que ce soit une classe, une couleur, une religion ou une creed. Et c'est pourquoi je suis là pour soutenir cette loi so that we can give our people access to justice, access to defend their rights, and to enjoy their freedom. Mr. Speaker, ascending to the CCJ is part of the decolonization process. For many years, this country was around the shackles of colonialism. We have sought our independence. And that we are actually charting our way. Independence is not a one-day affair. It is a process. And looking for our own court of justice to ensure that our people get their rights, their rights are protected, this is what we are speaking to. Mr. Speaker, for your information, and I like to speak to these issues, we have over 300, about 341 inmates at Borderly who are on remand. They haven't had their day in court to decide their fate. And I understood there is one inmate who has appeared before the court for 30 times and he has not had a judgment. So with the CCG, coming closer even to the, um, the, the field of justice, 
we will see the wheel of justice turning faster. And I recall I asked that question of the president of the CCJ to ask what support will the CCJ give our local justice system here? And he said the possibility exists. They can give support, they can give guidance, they can give training so that our justice system moves a little faster. So I applaud our decision to move closer to the CCJ. It is an institution that we have been making contribution towards and we have not been making full use of it. And by going across now to make it our final court of appeal, more St. Lucians will benefit from the services of this institution. Mr. Speaker, I regard this move as reinforcing the philosophy of a caring government, putting our people first. A caring government that wants to ensure that all St. Lucians have equal access to justice. As I said, not for the rich, only, but for all, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, regardless of your color, regardless of your status, regardless of where you live in St. Lucia, this government is creating that opportunity for our people. And Mr. Speaker, as a caring government, we want to dispel the view held by some of our people that justice is for the rich among us and not for the poor and the marginalized. Avec Madou, gouvernement Sala, Kagoume, et nous avons mis loi neuf pour être qui dernier saint lycée, si Maléwe, c'est si Fama, c'est mon encore ouais bon la oui ya, you only rights too, and therefore we have to ensure that we put systems in place to defend them and to protect them. Mr. Speaker, I have no choice but to represent the interests of those who place their confidence in me. My duty is to give them the level of representation they duly deserve. I pledge my full support to the constitutional amendment to make the CCJ the final court of appeal for St. Lucia. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me your listening air. I rest my case.